Ah, where am I dancing? El Jarabe Tapatio, which is very Mexican. And today I'm going to teach you something that is not grammar uh, or something more cultural. I'm going to teach you about some of the most common nicknames, the most common last names, and how we don't use the term middle name and cultural aspects like that. The nicknames, well, first of all, I wrote here the names, the last names, and the most popular last names in different parts, different countries in Latin America. It's quite interesting, so stick around. Muy bien. And I'm going to teach you how to use Mr. and Mrs. and Miss and all that uh, in, in Spanish. Muy bien. Bueno, bienvenidos. Y el primero es Pepe. Pepe is for José. José, to all Jose's, they call them Pepe's. Pepe's, like my sister's Karina ex-boyfriend, Pepe. He was so annoying. I'm so glad that he is the ex-boyfriend because he was really, he was? No, 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 he is annoying. But he is the ex-boyfriend, my sister's ex-boyfriend. He was really annoying. We call him El Tiro Loco. Um, Pepe, José. Toño, Antonio. Toño, Antonio. Oh, my T is weird. Toño, Antonio. Toño. The, the ñ. Like ñ. Like, for example, in, there is this ne, last name, Vietnamese last name in English. A lot of Viet, people who had Vietnamese, they like ñ. Like ng. Ng is like ñ. That sound is the ñ. Beto. Many Betos. Beto por Alberto. O por Roberto, I forgot, Roberto, very important, Roberto. Robertos y Alberto son Betos. Poncho, como mi amigo Poncho, tengo un amigo que se llama Poncho. Crecimos juntos en Pueblo Viejo. Poncho, Alfonso, Alfonso, Poncho. Pancho, ah, difference. Poncho con O y Pancho con A. Pancho y Poncho. Pancho y Poncho estaban en el monte. Sí, can, can, there's a song about Pancho y Poncho. Alfonso Pancho Francisco. Like my other sister's ex-boyfriend is called Pancho Francisco. I think they are still important. Uh, Pancho. Chucho Jesús. Chucho. Chuy. Sometimes they call them Chuy. Now my sister is... Her name is Mary of Jesus, Maria de Jesus, and they call her Chuy, but I call her Mary, Mari, Chuy, Chucho, short for Jesus. Muy bien. Now, these are the most common for men. Now, I am not being here like all the nicknames in Latin America. For all I know, these names, please remember them because they are for history. Now everybody is named Kevin, Dylan, Jennifer, <laughs> and uh, what else? All, all 210, Beverly Hills 210470. Uh, all those, they are in Pueblo Viejo, eh? Like, nobody is called Alberto anymore. No, it's Kevin, Jennifer, uh, Dylan, uh, what else? Jonathan. Uh, what else? Let me remember, because there are so many. Look, they have my face, just Mexican as the cactus. The Mexican as the cactus face, and his name is Kevin. Huh? What do you think? It's only for you, people? No, we also have those names. It's just pronounced different. Kevin. So that's why I wasn't so exhaustive about my list, because I said, okay, I'm going to do this archaic lesson that go is going to go out of trend tomorrow because nobody's names, like maybe my, my, look, my mother, my mother's uncles, their names are, oh my goodness, I don't even know how they had that names, Aniceto, Panfilo, Audencio, uh, Aristeo, Aristeo is a common name now, uh, but Panfilo, Aniceto, Tio, uh, 
proceso and it's all these names and like that's so strange that they had those names because they are really the older generation now this generation is kind of my generation but the new generation is kevin jonathan uh all those uh anglo-saxon names they love it different uh, pronunciation but the same idea and, and different faces but the same idea so now when you are working with your hispanic friend you're not gonna say hola francisco oh francisco it's so exotic we're gonna say hola kevin see <laughs> it's gonna be like all uh homogenized <laughs> we're all gonna have the same names muy bien uh for women are lola dolores Dolores, the meaning is pains. Imagine being named pains, Dolores, but it's very common. My friend, one of my best friends called Dolores, I, I call her Lola, Lola, Lupe, Lupe. In Mexico, everybody's name is Lupe, but we say Lupe or Lupita. We tend, in Mexico, we tend to make it diminutive. That means make them small with the an ita or ito to make it cuter. Lupita, to make it sweeter. Lupita, Lolita, Panchito, Chuchito, Betito. See, all those we make it like sweeter, cuter. Toñito, Betito, Ponchito, Panchito, Chuchito, Chuyita, Lolita, Lupita, Leti, Rosy, Patti. Por Patricia, por Rosa, Leticia, Leti, Lupita. Lupita. Lupita aquí, Lupita allá. Muy bien. Now, those are the names. As I said, I'm not being exhausted for the reasons I expressed already. Which topic? I am very... Uh, I have a lot of thoughts about it, but I'm not going to discuss because some people might get offended. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Now, I read this um, article. And uh, sorry for this, but I forgot um, the name. Oh, okay, I read this article in this um, newspaper. It's called El País. And the journalist who wrote it is Javier Galán. And he writes about a census that was done in Latin America. And the last names that came out as being more popular or having higher uh, number of people whose last names were here. So I found it very interesting and I wanted to share it with you. Of course, this is not mine. This is not my census. This is from an article from El País, from Javier Galán. Um, so for example, Hernández, and it's interesting before I go, like you see how many start with e Z? Iz, López, Hernández, Rodríguez, almost half. That's interesting, I don't know why, but I'm certainly gonna find out why. Hernández, López, Martínez, Rodríguez, Zambrano, González, Flores, Quispe. I had never seen this in my entire life. It's in Peru. I've never been in Peru, but apparently there is very common. I have a lot of students who live in Peru, so you might be able to tell me about it. Hernández is common, the most common, in Mexico and El Salvador. López in Guatemala and Nicaragua. Martinez in Honduras. Rodriguez is the most common last name. Cuba, República Dominicana. I couldn't write it all because it was gonna get off the board. Fuera de la pizarra o el pizarrón. Venezuela, Costa Rica, Uruguay y Colombia. <laughs> ¿Qué tal, eh, Rodríguez? Rodríguez están por todos lados. And it comes from an interesting uh, ancestor, so I'll, I'll get into that later. We don't have time for this right now. Zambrano, eh, Zambrano en Ecuador, González en Panamá, Paraguay, Argentina, Flores. Never imagined this last name was going to be in the top list. Flores en Bolivia, and Quispe en Perú. As I said, I never heard this one. Hernández, yes. López, sí. Martinez, sí, sí, Rodríguez, Zambrano. Also in the list was um, very um, frequent to see 
Garcia. Garcia is a very common last name. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear here in the top top 10. It's like our top 10 list. Uh, en, en la lista, porque yo creo que hay menos gente con este apellido, pero García es muy común. So I wanted to share this with you because I found it interesting. At least, you know, it, it, it gives you an idea of like the last names in Latin America. And I think that's nice. When you are learning a language, you want to learn a lot of that language, not only grammar and vocabulary. Now, when you are expressing something, for example, this is very important. Uh, la señora Martínez o la señora Dolores, la señora Lupita o la señora eh, Rodríguez, la señora Zambrano. You can put here the first name or the last name. El señor Martínez o el señor eh, Alfonso, el señor Poncho, el señor Jesús. Usually you would say here instead of the nicknames, you would say the full names because already Mr., like el señor or Mrs., la señora, is already formal. So you may want to use the full name, not the nickname, because this is very informal, so you're kind of talking to your body. You don't have to say señor, señora. Eh, pero when you want to uh, make it uh, short, like, uh, what's the name of when you make a... Uh, I, I forgot. What's the name? I'm gonna, I'm gonna remember. I'm gonna try to remember and tell you. I had it, I had it in my mind. Anyway, when you say la señora, el señor, la señora y el señor, when you're gonna put a period here, you're going to use a capital and a lowercase. But if you are saying señora fully, you do not need a capital. Okay, a capital letter, mayúscula. You do not need it. Now, this is a mistake that a lot of native speakers do and a lot of people who are learning Spanish do. When you are using señora, the full word, you are not going to capitalize the S. Same for señor. You are not going to capitalize the S. You're going to keep it in lower case. Now, when you're going to use the... Um, the abbreviation, the abbreviation, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> the abbreviation, it's just a sophisticated word. Uh, la señora, you, because you're going to use the abbreviation, then you do need the capital first S. This is very important. Don't forget, full, no capital. Abbreviation, C capital. <laughs> C mayúscula, no minúscula. Now, when you are going to say don, don is mister, but it's in a more informal way or more, uh, I guess, rural, not, not from the city or from the workplace if you look at, a, if you work at a corporate. It's, it's more like a town, small town, small city, not for the big city and, and uh, the New York talk. No, like the, the big capital talk, no. Uh, not the New York talk, you're gonna use don. For example, in Pueblo Viejo, because I was raised in a very small town. Dusty, very dusty. Pueblo Viejo, we, we said to Mr. or Mrs. Don or Doña. Don or Doña. It's kind of like a more uh, informal way to say Mrs. Don Mario or Doña Maria. I'm always so creative with these names. I should use more current names like Don Kevin y Doña Jennifer. Hey, ¿qué tal? More modern. <laughs> Don Mario y Doña Maria. Now here, when you use Don and Doña, you're not gonna use the last names. If you want to use the last names, you need, I spoke like, if you need to use your last names, you need to use Señor or Señora. Now there is another way, well, as I said, this is, informal, more casual, small town talk. And this is the New York talk, like more, in, it's not that formal, but you would say this. Really incorporates, they all refer as the architect, the engineer, the bachelor. See, Mexicans love to call each other bachelor, like licenciado, licenciado, especially los godines, that are people who work in government offices and work nine to five in government offices. 
So they always call each other licenciados. Licenciado, licenciada. I used to be a, a proofreader in, an, in a publisher and this guy from the design department would always call me licenciada. And I said, call me Anna, you don't have to call me. Yes, I finished my BA, but you don't have to address me with my BA title, licenciada. Maybe if I finish a PhD, but come on. Anyway, he never did it, so he kept calling me licenciada. So yeah, in, corp in the corporate world, they tend to use more doctor, engineer, bachelor, a lot, etc. But the regular people, the peasants, the people who work in class people, <laughs> like me. Say la señora, el señor, eh, don y doña, is called to like imagine Pueblo Viejo, the small town, don, doña, or you're in the beach, right? Like you want to be more spicy with the people, don and doña, it's a nice way to address them, don. Mario, Doña Maria, remember Don, and the first names, and Señor, Señora, you can either put first names or last names. Speaking of that, I have to talk about the first name and the last names in, in Spanish, but in a second. There is another that is called Miss, La Señorita. Now, in Spain, this is not used. They call you Señora. For example, Señora, ¿quiere un café? Señora. In Latin America, if you're a Miss, like if it's understood that you do not have children, or you're not married, it's still uh, common to say señorita. Uh, let me get my borrador. Mi borrador. La, la, la. El borrador, la señora y la señorita. Señorita, por favor. My friend Erica always says, señorita, por favor. Like, please, miss. <laughs> señorita. Entonces, en Latinoamérica, en Latinoamérica decimos todavía señorita. Si alguien, if someone sees you without children and maybe they don't think you're married or they say señorita. Yeah, if you have children, you're married and they say señora. Now, I tend to use señora just because I don't like this idea of señorita. In Spain, they don't use señorita. It's kind of derogatory. They, um, misogynist, like señorita. But in Latin America, it's just, Me Mexico is very common, I'm sure, in, in, in Central America too, in South America. Señorita, um, last time I was on the street with my mother, estaba con mi mamá, and I let a woman pass, and I said, pase señora, por favor, and my mother told me, señorita, call her señorita. <laughs> I was like, Okay, discúlpeme, pase señorita, por favor. So it's kind of a very old school uh, idea that, you know, if you don't know, for, go for this. Now, if you have doubts, go for this. And well, if you see them with their children, you can say señora. Uh, but it's, it's kind of like an old fashioned thing. And you know, my mom gave me like, oh, what do you know? La, 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 you have to call a señorita, she's so young. And like, oh, well, I don't know. I prefer to be safe with señora. No, 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 señora. Me, that I'm 70 years old. But a woman is, okay, okay, mother. Now I'm going to use señorita if I don't know. Muy bien, qué bueno. Now, uh, my, and this is because my mother's friend, she never married. And she's 70 years old. And my landlady, my a landlady that I had, she was like 82 years old. I had to call her señorita because she never married. So my mother's friend never married, so I have to call her señorita. Okay, entonces, be aware. In Latin America, if you don't know, you may want to use this because if you use señora, some people might get insulted. Like, oh, where do you see my children? <laughs> you see? <laughs> Oh, I, I don't look young anymore, and things like that. Now, in Spain, uh, I guess because it's Europe and it's more progressive in that way, they use señora. So it's just a different thing. In Spain, you may not want to use señorita. It's like in French, they say that mademoiselle is kind of like nobody uses it. They all say madame, not mademoiselle. I always give you examples of French because I'm learning French. I've been learning French for so many years, but not, not so good yet. Uh, muy bien. Now, 
the last thing I wanted to tell you about first names and last names is like Latin American people and Spanish people, uh, we have a first name or maybe two first names and two last names. We don't have something like middle name, something very strange. If you have two last names, like imagine my, I only have one, uh, one first uh, name, Anna. So my, my first name is Anna, but maybe my, my mother said she wanted to, my father wanted to call me Sitlali. So imagine my father said, okay, well, both Anna Sitlali. And then my last names are Hernandez Lopez. Imagine, right? Because Hernandez, the first last name belongs to my father. And the second last name belongs to my mother. So I would be Ana Citlali Hernandez Lopez. ¿Qué tal, eh? Ana Citlali Hernandez Lopez. But I don't have a second first name. I have only one first name, Ana. And I have two last names and I use them all the time. Why? Well, out of respect to my mother and my father. Because if, I, if my mother sees that I don't use her last name, she gets really upset. And I think most mothers do because it's kind of like losing your identity in your child who you suffer a lot to have it. And there you go, they just respect you. So it's a Hernandez Lopez. So it would be Ana, first name, Hernandez Lopez. We call it apellido paterno. Last name is apellido paterno, apellido materno. So you were gonna write it. Let me erase this Leti, Pati, Rosy, Susi, Chenchi, etc., etc. Vamos a ver. Um, apellido, nombre. Golem, nombre. Oh, mi marcador se está acabando. Necesito más marcadores. Nombre, apellido, last name, apellido, apellido. If you were in Argentina, say, apellido. ¿Cuál es tu apellido? Apellido paterno. Paterno de papá, de padre. Y apellido, I'm not going to write again apellido, but apellido materno. So if you go to one place, they'll call you. What's your name? ¿Cómo se llama? ¿Cuál es tu nombre? Eh, Javier. Su apellido paterno, always su apellido paterno. Martínez, su apellido ma ma materno. Flores, Martínez Flores. If you are uh, filling, uh, filling out a, a fly, a formula, uh, formulario, no. Uh, no, a form, sorry. Formulario, we say in, Sp in Spanish, a form is in English. Sorry about that. Disculpen ustedes. Uh, Tuve un día muy largo. Estoy un poco cansada. Pero dice, nombre, apellido paterno y apellido materno. Entonces, lo que vamos a hacer es, always you're going to see in the form that says apellido materno y apellido paterno. And usually Latin American people uh, are going to use both all the time. And there's not really a lot to put the father's one first, but it's just understood. Uh, and I think that's it. So you have nombre, apellido paterno, apellido materno. Uh, you don't have such thing like a middle name unless you have two last names, you can use the other. Um, but it's just a different thing. Like don't think too much about middle names in, in for Hispanic people because we get confused about it. We have a name and two last names. One that belongs to our father and that one belongs to our mother. And you keep it like that. Muy bien. Well, as always, como siempre, it's a pleasure teaching you Spanish. Uh, if you like my lessons, please donate to my channel so I can keep making videos and I can keep teaching you Spanish. And I maybe, <laughs> I would like you to go to my website, butterflyspanish.com and sign up for my newsletter uh, that I send. Uh, and I talk about different topics related to Spanish. Thank you so much for watching my videos and I will see you next time with my next lesson. Gracias y hasta luego. Que duermas bien. Ya me voy porque tengo sed.